Hey guys, this is Philip from Steve's and Motor Co. And on today's episode, we are going to be installing a KAD Big Brake Kit. Alright, so let's talk a little bit about the particular brake kit that we got. Uh, as with all KD products, they're really nicely made. Uh, this is a really good kit. Um, this one here is the KD 7.9 inch vented rotor uh, big brake kit. Now they sell a couple different offerings. Uh, there are uh, bigger rotors, smaller rotors. Uh, usually with a 10 inch wheel, you can fit a 7.5 inch rotor. Um, and with particular 10 inch wheels, you can fit this one, which is a 7.9 inch rotor. If you want to go any bigger than that, uh, unfortunately you need to go bigger than a 10 inch wheel. So uh, we've got it kind of broken apart. You can see right now it comes with um, uh, Mintex racing pads. Uh, these are supplied with the kit. Um, and we've got this box here. And these are the calipers. This is the... the Yes, to resistance. Really nicely packaged. You can see it's got uh, bubble wrap protecting all this and this beautiful uh, gold plating on here. It's uh, anodized gold. You can see that there's a inspection thing there to show that it's been leak tested. Uh, right away, you can tell how light these are. Um, these are way, way lighter than the steel uh, 7.5 calipers that you get with the Cooper S package, um, as you'd hope they'd be, because they are aluminum. Uh, they are a four piston design. You can see there's two in here, two in here. Uh, and it's, uh, it's a fixed caliper, as with um, all mini calipers, so, um, so no sliding action or anything. The pads are retained by these cotter pins, just like factory. Uh, and it is a uh, two-piece design, so it's bolted through right here. It's also got two bleed nipples. Um, I think that is so that uh, the same caliper can be oriented left or right, and, uh, and then you can bleed like that, because you always want to bleed from the, the top uh, bleeder here. Um, so with some calipers, when they only have one, you can mistakenly put it on upside down, and you can never get them bled, so it's kind of a neat feature that they did like that. Uh, and then right on the side here, it shows 7.9V, so you know exactly the size of the rotor, which we'll get to now. So this is a 7.9 inch rotor, uh, and this is special for a Mini because, as you can see, it's vented. Uh, this is pretty conventional for most, uh, most modern day cars, but for Minis, they're all uh, solid rotor from the factory, both 7.5 and the uh, and the 8-inch rotors, the 8.4s. Um, so this is a really nice addition, especially if you're going to be doing a lot of uh, hard um, braking with like track driving or really performance driving. You can see that they're also slotted with these nice curved slots. Uh, this helps uh, move brake dust away uh, from the pad, um, kind of cleans the pad surface as they're going. Uh, and, uh, and these rotors, we tested earlier, these rotors uh, work with the 8.4 inch drive hubs that bolt onto the outside here. Uh, so if you have a car with, uh, with like um, an SPI or one of the later cars that has this, the, the big brakes and you want to be able to fit tens, uh, but you don't want to have to buy new drive hubs, this is a good kit for you because all you have to do is change the rotors and change the calipers and pads obviously. Uh, and, uh, and it'll bolt right together. If you do choose to go with a 7.5 inch uh, Cooper S package, uh, it also requires new drive hubs because the drive hub is a different design. Uh, so with this kit, uh, it used the 8.4. I believe their 7.5 kit uh, is based off the Cooper S one. So if you're going with their 7.5 kit, uh, which is a solid rotor uh, with a slightly smaller um, diameter, uh, then you will need uh, new drive hubs. So. Uh, this is kind of an interesting feature of that. Let's see what else is in the box here. Some new hardware. I believe this hardware here is for attaching the drive hubs to the rotors. Let's just check it out. Yeah, so black oxide, Allen head bolt. Uh, these go into here. We'll explain later. 
Uh, so that is what bolts the uh, 8.4-inch drive hubs uh, onto these rotors. So I got everything laid out here and before we go to install, I want to just kind of give you um, some specs on the, on the, the calipers and the, the setup here, um, just if you're interested in kind of what they entail. There's a couple different big brake kits on the markets and they're all a little bit different. Um, so in this one, we're going to uh, weigh the calipers, I'll tell you all the measurements. Uh, and then also when we pull off uh, the 8.4 inch um, brakes, I'll weigh those too so you get a, a weight comparison. So just with the caliper here, zero out the scale. And we've got 2.904 pounds, uh, which is quite light. You can feel it's really light. And I guarantee you that's going to be a lot lighter uh, than, the, uh, than the ones that we're taking off. Just a note from Future Phil, we've taken the rotors off the car or the calipers off the car. And uh, as promised, we'll weigh them here. And that is 7.69 pounds. So that is way different. That is much, much heavier than the KED ones that are on the car. With the kit, uh, it comes with uh, the pads, like I explained here. Uh, these Mintex pads, uh, one of the pads has this plug on it. Uh, and I believe this is a wear indicator. So I guess once it reaches a certain amount of wear, it creates a continuity between this plug uh, and you can then hook that up to a light. I think for our purpose, we're probably just gonna snip that off. It's not needed uh, on our particular car, but it's neat that that's included. Uh, on the, uh, on the, uh, the calipers here, obviously it's four piston, um, and I just wanted to measure out the, uh, the piston size, just as a comparison. We can again do it later with the, uh, with the stock brakes. Looks about 35.5 millimeters for the, uh, the piston diameter. Uh, and obviously there's four. And then just to give you an idea for the, the basic size here from top to bottom, we're looking at about seven and a half inches and side to side from the edge of the piston, uh, it's about four and three quarter inches. So maybe that'll help you uh, with um, uh, figuring out whether or not this will fit within your particular uh, wheel setup. KED also has a template that you can get from them uh, where you just uh, print it out and cut it out and you can place it next to your, uh, next to your rotor and uh, it'll show you whether or not the calipers will fit with your particular wheels. Especially with these 7.9s, uh, it's kind of hit or miss. Um, they're sort of pushing the limit of how big of a brake you can fit under a 10 inch wheel. Um, so um, you just want to make sure that uh, it'll fit your application before you go ahead and purchase them. So with these all laid out, uh, let's uh, go find a car to install these on. I wonder who we could do that with. Huh. You might recognize uh, this fellow from pretty much every video in the background. <laughs> So this is Richard, uh, this is our friend. Um, uh, he's building a cool boot board right now, actually for his mini. Um, but he is the lucky recipient of these brakes. So we're gonna pull this car in. You've probably seen it. It's been in a couple other episodes. Uh, really clean SPI. Let's get it in the shop, pull the wheels off, and we'll start to do the brake install. <laughs> What happened to the coffins? I, I turned left. <laughs> oh, 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 the mats. They're just hot. Just <laughs> hot. Uh, it's okay, right? It's not beer. My coffee is fine. Yours survived. Yeah. <laughs> the most important one. <laughs> as long as my coffee survived. Oh, oh, oh. Your large, <laughs> the little your large thigh. Yours in oh, RIP. So before we install the new brakes, we got to take off the old ones. Uh, I'm going to show you the way that I do it. Find it's the quickest. Uh, with the KED brakes, they don't come with instructions. They figure that if uh, you're comfortable working on your brakes, you probably can figure this out. 
But if you have any questions, just follow along with me. Uh, it's really simple and we'll get these installed. So first thing I usually do is I take off the uh, nut that holds the tie rod end. I find that once you take this off, then you get a little bit more movement and it's easier to take the caliper off, which I'll show you. So let's loosen that up. And again, I said loosen it up here. So you see there's the threads. I like to keep the nut on like this. This just protects the threads uh, so that when you hit it with the hammer to break the taper, there's a taper in here. So you wanna hit right here. Don't, don't hit this way, you hit this way. Uh, and that'll uh, shock this, break the taper. This will fall down. The nut protects the threads in case you hit it accidentally. Uh, and then you can take it off. So that, then I take this off. Put this back on here, just for safekeeping. Put that out of the way. Uh, and then now you can see that this moves really easily and it actually moves further uh, than it uh, normally does with the steering rack attached. So now I can turn it all the way this way and I can take the two bolts that hold the caliper on. Then the caliper will just pull right off like this. Just tuck it under there. And then uh, for the brake install, uh, we've got to remove the rotors. Uh, that means we got to take off the big nut uh, at the end of the CVs. Uh, and for that first, we got to take out this cotter pin. So just a pair of needle nose pliers, straighten the end out. And then what I like to do is just stick the needle nose in the end here and tap it out like that. And then with an impact gun, loosen up this. There you go. And then you want to make sure this is moving freely here. So you can see that just comes right off. Sometimes if they're seized, you can hit it with a punch and that's what that little recess is. Put the punch in there so you don't hurt the threads or mushroom it. So then this comes right off and there you go. Make sure to keep this, the tapered um, uh, washer here. One thing to check on these is that the taper on the side is smooth. If there's a big ridge in there, what happens is it wears into this um, and then you can never properly torque your wheel bearings because this is what holds the wheel, wheel bearing together. So uh, make sure to inspect that one and the mating surface of the drive hub. If there's any marks on here, you got to replace uh, either or or both. So with the uh, rotors that are supplied, uh, like I said earlier, they use these, which are the uh, 8.4 inch drive hubs. Uh, in order to remove that, there's just four bolts right here. So we'll zap those out and then we can take the drive hub off of the rotor. So that is our old rotor and this is our new one and you can see this is the stock rotor uh, and it's solid. Uh, this is typical of a lot of old cars, uh, a lot of the rear brakes of cars. Uh, it works well enough for a Mini but this uh, has a lot more heat dissipation than this. You can see just the difference, both the, the size of it for giving off um, uh, be able to radiate heat and then also the fact that it's vented as this spins around uh, it grabs air from the inside and shoots it out through the holes uh, acting as a, uh, a cooling device and then with the slots again cleans the pads keep them uh, keep them nice so this is definitely uh, a big upgrade over this one here you can see the size difference too with 8.4 and 7.9 they are quite smaller uh, quite a bit smaller here 
uh, but that allows us to fit 10 inch wheels. And with the added thickness of this, it's gonna have a lot more cooling capability uh, than these will. While I have this off actually, let's throw this on the scale. Um, by hand feel, I feel like this is a little bit lighter than this one, uh, but I'm curious. So memory serves 7.04 pounds for the new one. and 6.27 for the old one. Okay, so now what we can do is install the, uh, the drive hub. We've inspected it. We're gonna put it on here. Um, in Richard's case though, uh, we are actually gonna be replacing the wheel studs as well. Uh, these factory wheel studs are totally fine, uh, but what we are going to be using is a longer stud will allow the addition of a spacer. Uh, as well, uh, we are going to be changing them out for some nice uh, CAD coated versions. So these are the new studs we're putting on. Uh, they're really nice. Uh, these are CAD coated. They're a little bit longer. You can see like that. Um, and it's a length that's not uh, available off the shelf from any mini distributor. And you might be wondering where do you get these really nice uh, CAD coated uh, wheel studs? Well. Turns out we did a lot of research and uh, Polaris side-by-sides have the same uh, wheel stud size as minis uh, and they're you know capable of doing uh, big jumps and going rock crawling and stuff so they're really strong and uh, if you're interested in getting a set of these this is the Polaris part number. So that's a neat little addition. Uh, let's throw these in maybe I'll do a little side tidbit and I'll show you how I remove these. Really simple, involves a hammer. So what I'll do first is I'll just throw this in the vise. I'm gonna put some soft jaws on the vise here. Just, these are just aluminum 90s you want, and it's just a nice uh, way of making sure that you don't scratch um, here. I'm just gonna throw them in this way. You wanna orient it so that two of the studs are facing on the side here. Just tighten that up. And then I'm gonna go get a, uh, a nut that I can throw over the edge of this. So these are just 3 8 24 nuts that we have. Uh, it's gonna be a sacrificial one. So I put it on and I put it on so that it's just, just above flush with the end of the wheel stud. And then you just hit it on the, on the top with a hammer and it'll come right out. Just like that. And then you kind of lift it up a bit and you can take the stud right out. Save those. If you don't do this and you uh, uh, hit it on the head, you can mushroom it. And what that does is it means that you'll never be able to get uh, the nut back on there. So this just stops that from happening. A one hit wonder. <laughs> I really uh, gave it the, the beans there. So before we can install these drive hubs onto the new rotors, we do need to drill out the holes uh, where the bolts that attach them go. The reason for this is that the factory bolts are a little bit smaller than the ones that are supplied by KAD. These are a coarse thread bolt uh, that's 10 millimeters. So you need to get a 10 millimeters or a 13, 30 seconds drill bit uh, and drill these out uh, before we can continue with the installation. And now once those are drilled, we can put in the new studs. Just drop them in. And I usually just get it started with the hammer just so that's kind of seated. And then afterwards what I'll do is I'll, I'll put a nut on the end um, and, uh, and tighten it up with a torque wrench. That'll pull it. Uh, and not only will it pull it in, uh, but it'll pull it in square with the, uh, the face of the hub here. Just gonna throw a couple washers on top. I'll just allow this to spin. All right, so now we can install the drive hubs onto the rotor. 
First, just make sure that the mating face is nice and clean here, which it is, as this one here. And then we're just gonna put that on top. Make sure it's sitting flat. Line up the holes, and we can use the new supplied bolts along with the thick washers that are supplied here. KD uh, gives you a bunch of different uh, washers for uh, attaching the drive hub and shimming the calipers depending on the rotor selection you have. So there's some thinner ones here and then some thicker ones as well as some lock washers. So we're going to use the thick ones like that. And before we install these I'm going to put a little bit of Loctite on there just for extra security. Threads. And then put those through and run them in by hand. And you always want to get all the bolts in before you tighten anything with anything that requires something like this where there's multiple fixturings. So those are in. I'm going to tighten them up. So we've got these run in a little bit and I'm just going to zap them up with the gun. Not, not crazy tight, just in a cross pattern. And then once it's on the car, later when we are tightening the CVs, we uh, can torque them up and they're gonna be torqued up to 42 foot pounds. Uh, but for now, as long as they're tight and then this is nice and flush, uh, we can continue moving forward. All right, so now we can throw them back onto the hubs here. So before we do, I just like to hit it with a bit of brake clean. They come with a little bit of oil to protect the coating uh, for the, the rotor so that they don't rust. So hit that with a bit of brake clean, wipe it clean before you put them on. If you don't do this, then there is a risk of the pads not being able to uh, bite in and, uh, and they won't like seat themselves properly. So got that. And then you can put it right on. You'll notice that it's still got the uh, the backing shield here, the brake backing shield. Unfortunately, that won't fit with this setup, so you are going to have to lose that. Um, but that's totally fine. And then a little tip when you are installing these, you'll notice that on the end of the CV, there's a hole for the cotter pin. You want to make sure that that hole uh, is not lined up with one of the studs, because then it can be really difficult to get the cotter pin in and out. So I always just mark where that is and then put it in so that you can fit the, uh, the cotter pin this direction through like that. And then the tapered cone goes on top. Then the nut. And then just to get everything sitting nicely, I'm just gonna zap that up with the impact gun. This gets torqued to 180 foot pounds, so don't worry about your gun over torquing it, just using one of these small electric ones. Just zap it, and then that way uh, it orients everything, make sure that the wheel bearing is seated, uh, make sure that the hub is um, perpendicular to the rotor, and then we can work on the calipers from there. Really important note here, once you tighten up the end of the CV here, uh, you wanna make sure that it spins freely, and on this case, it's not. Uh, and the reason for this is because it's touching just the edge of the steering arm here. Um, and uh, that's common for these rotors that are extra thick. Uh, they're just, you know, using all the available space possible. So what we're going to do is, if you see, it's kind of, it's really tight there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off that nut again. And we're just going to see where it's hitting. And... And you can see there's a little bit of a tracer right there of where it was touching just a little bit. Uh, and that's the casting mark from this piece here. Uh, so really easy to fix this. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna take a little bit of a flapper disc and grind this down just a bit, just to clear it. This one looks like it's not hitting, but we'll do both just to be safe. Um, and then we'll recheck with, a, with this torqued up and make sure that's not hitting. So there we go, now with this one clearance a little bit, 
spinning freely. So I'm just gonna pop this off, uh, hit it with a little bit of paint so it doesn't rust, uh, and then put it back together. For those of you that can get it, this Worth bumper and trim paint, this is the best paint we have ever used that's out of an aerosol can. Uh, it's amazing. We paint everything with it. It dries super fast. Uh, it's self-etching. It's self-priming. It's really durable. Uh, and it even smells nice. So now the moment we've all been waiting for, we can install the calipers onto the car. So installing the calipers uh, involves the supplied hardware. The order that it goes is it goes the long bolt here, then the lock washer, then the thin flat washer, then through the caliper like this, and then the thick CAD coated washer and that is how it goes onto the car. Uh, to install them I like to put them both through like this and then back these out just enough so that they're holding the CAD washers uh, but not in the way. Then you can just put it on and then put the, uh, the bolts right in. So let's go ahead and do that. With them run in by hand, you can tighten them up with a wrench. And then we'll come in with a torque wrench, torque these up to 40 foot pounds. Once they're bolted up, you wanna make sure that everything still spins freely, nothing's touching. You want to make sure that the bolts aren't coming through and touching the back of the rotor, that you've got clearance in the front. Everything looks good, which it does. Uh, and now we can do the lines. Now that the way that the front mini brake lines work, uh, if you don't have an aftermarket banjo system, if it's the normal thread in type, that you have to thread the brake lines into the caliper first. And then once they're tight and clocked the way that they are going to be when they are tight, then you put them straight up uh, and they go into the hard line that runs from the master cylinder. So unfortunately that does mean we have to take off from the inside and the outside. Um, Richard had a set of uh, Goodridge stainless steel lines which we can reuse, uh, but we will have to remove them from both ends before we can reinstall them onto the calipers. Uh, a little trick before we do that, uh, I like to get into the car and I have a little adjustable push rod and I push the brake pedal down just a little bit. What that does is it closes off the fill port of the master cylinder and makes it so that when you crack the lines, it won't just drip out all the fluid. It'll drip out a little bit, but then it'll stop and uh, just makes the operation not quite as messy as it needs to be. So let's go ahead, uh, I'll put that on and we'll start taking off the brake lines. Luckily, Richard's car has got a bit of a cutout here, so you can see this side. Usually, uh, the passenger side or right-hand side uh, of the car uh, is a bit more difficult to access. Um, and because this has the junction block on it, uh, you need to remove the top bolt first. It's a 5 8 You can unthread that one. That one's got a lock washer or a um, crush washer on it. Some cars also have a pressure switch in place of this. So that's that one there, put that aside. And then in order to take the line off, you, you can just push the, uh, the hard line kind of out of the way in order to get a, uh, a socket uh, or a wrench on the big nut that holds the, uh, the brake line on there. And then that is the nut that's holding the brake line up. So make sure to hold the brake line, otherwise it's gonna spin. You can even just spin the entire brake line out. And this will all make a little bit more sense when I show it outside of the car. There we go. So that is that. And I'll take all this stuff out so you can see how it works. Okay, so the way this goes together in the car is it's this line that comes up like this. And then there's the, uh, the subframe here. Then there's a big lock washer that goes on top. 
and then the, the nut here, the big nut, and that holds the brake line to the subframe of the car. And then from there, there's the T-fitting that goes on top, first a lock washer, then the T-fitting, and then you get uh, another lock washer and the bolt that goes down into the brake line. This is for the right-hand side of the car when you're sitting in the car. Uh, the left-hand side is a much uh, simpler design where it's just a brake line that goes in, but it still has the same locking nut that goes on there. So because of this, um, this is why you have to remove from the inboard side as well, because we're gonna take it off from here. And depending on how the brake line gets threaded in, this clocking orientation will be different. So if you just unthread the caliper from here, when you go to rethread it on, you might get lucky and it'll be in the right orientation, but most likely it'll be off. So when you go to put the brake line, uh, the brake caliper on, it'll be like twisted. So it'll be all funny like that. Whereas what you want is you want the brake line installed in the car and then with the wheel straight facing this way you want it just spun up so it's um it's it's not twisted at all so with that let's remove the bottom one then we can thread the bottom one into the caliper and then this one into the car one important point whenever you're doing uh, anything that requires a crush washer like this uh, always take a new crush washer um, the worst thing is to install something trying to reuse the old one and then it leaks out. Um, ask me how I know. So now you can remove the protective covering over the brake line here and taking this one, run up, thread it in. And just make sure that the crush washer is sitting nicely, which it is. And then we'll tighten that up. And these don't need to be crazy tight, just enough to crush the crush washer. You'll get a feel for it. So there's, there's kind of the feel for when it grabs and then there's just a little bit of a squish. And then that's good. And then how we clock this is we put the wheel so it's facing straight ahead and then the brake line should go up and you'll see it'll have a little bit of a bend here but it should be going straight like this as if you put it sideways and then just bent it and went right up like that so after you got the brake line in the next thing is lock washer and then the big nut Okay, so now we're ready to install the, uh, the T-fitting uh, and the banjo bolt. Uh, make sure everything's clean before you put it together. If any little bits of dirt can fall in, um, you just don't want that and it can make it leak. So clean it up. Uh, the order goes crush washer, then the T-fitting, then crush washer, and then banjo bolt through it all. Brake line's all tied up. Uh, it's worth noting that we've actually been doing this on both sides. We're only showing you on the one because other than the brake fitting on the other side, on the brake line being slightly different, they're identical. Uh, the, the calipers here are not even sided, so it doesn't matter uh, which one you use for left or right. So just to make it simpler to film, we're just showing you the one side, but I've been doing the other side as well. Uh, and now with everything done, we're ready to put in the brake pads, which should be the final thing. So take the brake pad like this. I like to put a little bit of lubricant just on the sides, just a little bit like that. And I put them just right here. Don't put it on the pad material, just on the, uh, on the edge of the metal piece like that. And then they slide in just like this. So pad material facing on the inside. And then you see the two holes, those face outwards. Like that slides in nice and easy. Do the other one. That goes there. Like that. So I notice here that the inside pad is having some contact issues, and I believe it is on the uh, on the spacers right at the very end. Uh, they're protruding a little bit 
into the uh, into the area where the pad goes, and it's not allowing the um, the holes to line up perfectly. So that's no problem. What I'm going to do is uh, right on this corner here. You can see inside there. I'm just going to flap her disc off a little bit of the edge. This is metal, so it's totally fine to do it. And there's still a big contact patch. You just need to trim a little bit away for this to go all the way in. Okay, so we clearance those a little bit. Just give that a shot. And that goes perfectly in, so that's all good. Now we can put the cotter pins. And with the kit supplied two new cotter pins, always use new cotter pins. And we're gonna go in from the back side forward through the one hole through there, and then orient the other pad like that. And that's through, and then we'll put the other one in. So once those are through, then you can take the long end of the cotter pin and just fold it over like this on both sides. And that is the pads installed. So now we got all this attached. Uh, last thing is just to reattach the end of the tie rod end, uh, tighten that up, uh, and we are ready for bleeding. All right, so off camera, we installed everything uh, and bled the brakes. Uh, all I have to do now is get someone to hop in the car, hold the brakes, and I can torque the bolts that hold the drive hub to the rotor, 42 foot-pounds, and then torque the big CV nut here, 180 foot-pounds, and then turned until the cotter pin lines up, throw it in there, button it up, uh, and it's good to go. Now, one thing that we forgot to mention uh, when we were installing the rotors is you see, although the calipers are not sided, they can be put on either way, there is a side to the rotors. Now, the way that it should be installed is like this, which is sort of counterintuitive, where the, the curved uh, cuts on the side of the rotor here are facing kind of the front of the car. And the reason for this is as the car is rolling forward, you want these uh, cuts here to go along and um, remove brake dust from the, from the pads so they cut this way, not this way. Uh, with these rotors, they are straight veined rotors, meaning that the vents on the inside here um, come out f straight from the center of the wheel. Uh, if they are curved, you want them to flow in the direction kind of opposite to that. But in this case, because they're straight veined and you have uh, the curved cuts here, you want them facing this direction. So make sure of that before you put it on. Uh, the other thing we want to mention is that obviously you've seen throughout the process of installing these that there's a little bit of um, modifications that are needed. You have to shave a little bit here. You have to kind of make sure, take your time, make sure that things uh, fit well. These are kind of the biggest brakes you can fit on a mini with 10 inch wheels. They're really pushing the limits. You can see all the tight tolerances. Um, so credit to KAD for making something amazing like this that fits within a 10 inch wheel. Uh, but it is something that you're going to have to pay attention to when you go and you're installing it. So make sure that it's something that you feel comfortable with uh, that you can install these safely. And if you don't, uh, get a professional who knows what they're doing to do it. You don't want to mess around with having brakes that don't work. Um, it can be a real bad day uh, if that happens. So do it right. But if you follow along with me uh, when you're doing it, it um, should be no issue. So let me finish. I'm going to button this up uh, and then let's go for a test drive. All right, that's it for our big break install video. Hopefully that helped you out. As you can see, it's a little complicated. Uh, there's a couple of things you need to pay attention to when you're installing the brakes. So if you don't feel comfortable doing it yourself, make sure to bring it to a shop who knows what they're doing. Uh, you wanna make sure that brakes are done properly because they are a safety item. We were hoping to take them out on the road and test and do some high speed testing, but we felt like it just wasn't safe uh, to get to the speeds required to be able to really tell the difference between uh, these brakes and the stock brakes. But I can tell you from driving it around, one big difference is the modulation. There's way more of a progressive feel to the way that the brakes engage. 
uh, has something to do, I think, with the four pistons versus two. Uh, it grabs just kind of a um, little bit, not slower, but it's got, it's got more of a feel to it. So you can play with where you're at with the braking feel. So instead of just nothing, nothing, nothing and locked up, uh, you can find that middle point, which is really nice. And also, as you saw, the weight difference is huge. So having that amount of weight off the uh, unsprung sides of your front of your car is, is drastic. That will change everything from the way the car handles, the way it drives, the way it accelerates. So yeah, I mean, we really like these. Feel free to check them out on KAD's website and also check out our stuff, seafsimotorco.com. We've got a lot of cool parts that we're putting out. Uh, make sure to check those out. And if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe below. It really helps out our channel and we'll see you on the next one.